Hey guys, this is Sashank Velagadi again, and uh, I wanted to bring you another video where I could show you some of the shader work I've done in uh, DirectX and OpenGL. This is actually just the DirectX implementation, but uh, the OpenGL implementation looks exactly the same. Uh, I've imported a cube here with uh, a basic diffuse rock texture uh, that you can see here and uh, thrown it in. I even got my model airplane spinning up at the top there. And uh, I actually have a couple lights in here in the scene. Um, one of the lights is orbiting the cube, and uh, then another one of the lights is uh, at the camera. Um, so I've done some shader work to actually beef up this cube, so let me show you that. There you go. I think that looks a lot better. The uh, cube shader work, you know, helps, makes it look a lot more realistic, adds a little bit of specular, normal lighting on it, and uh, gives it a more of a 3D field. Um, I've done normal map lighting, specular lighting, and uh, I've used some hype map work actually um, to make the rocks pop out a little bit more. Um, the idea behind that is um, I use the hype map and the angle of incidence of the camera vector to um, make the the near side of the rocks more prominent and make the far side of the rocks uh, less prominent, so they feel like they really pop out, and that gives that three D effect, which I which I feel like you know turned out really well. Uh, if you look at the rocks on the side, though, like I mean, perfectly at an angle, you can tell that it's not actually 3D. But you know, I mean, from an angle like this, they do actually look and feel 3D, um, or at least I think so. Um, to actually make them 3D, I, I think I would probably have to um, add some real geometry there. That's the only real way to do that, and maybe I could do something with uh, DirectX 11 hardware tessellation or something like that. Um, so yeah, I actually had a lot of fun uh, sh shading this, and uh, it's the kind of work that I'd like to do more of in the future. Um, I can tell you some of the interesting caveats I've had while I was doing this. Um, the light position and the camera position are actually in world space, whereas the uh, normals and tangents for the textures are actually in tangent space, you know, tangent to the quad, I mean. So uh, I had to convert and do a, a quick change of basis. I actually converted all of them to tangent space because, you know, it's more efficient to convert the light and the camera, which are constants for a given rendering call, to uh, tangent space than it is the other way around for um, every time you do it in the pixel shader. Um, another thing that uh, is important to keep in mind is that uh, when you inter interpolate your values for these vectors um, from the vertex shader to the pixel shader, um, even if you had a unit vector in the vertex shader, the interpolated values of unit vectors aren't necessarily going to be unit vectors, unit length. So I had to renormalize them in the pixel shader, and you know that's something that you got to keep in mind um, when you're doing a lot of this graphics programming and stuff. Um, but I feel like this project turned out well, and I'm glad to show it to you guys. Um, I'll go ahead and compare between the original. This is just the simple diffuse texture. Um, it's pretty flat, pretty boring, and then uh, this is the same texture with my shader work on it. Um, I hope you like this video, and uh, you guys can like tell me what you think. Just send me an email and stuff like that. Um, thank you very much.